Thank you for that introduction. Good morning. I'm excited to be joining you today to talk about the March 2020 transition under the Biologics Price Competition and Innovation Act of 2009, specifically its impact on generics. We'll start by briefly discussing some background information about the Biologics Price Competition and Innovation Act of 2009, which I'll be referring to today as the BPCI Act. Then we'll describe the agency's interpretation of the statutory term protein within the definition of biological product. And finally, we'll also talk about the BPCI Act's transition provision and its impact on generic drugs. First, some brief background information. As we know, Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act governs the approval of new drug applications under Section 505B and abbreviated new drug applications under Section 505J. On the other hand, biological products are licensed under Section 351 of the Public Health Service Act as a Biologics License Application, or BLA. Although the majority of therapeutic biological products have been licensed under the Public Health Service Act, some protein products had historically been approved under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. Also, prior to the BPCI Act, there was no abbreviated BLA pathway. The BPCI Act was enacted on March 23, 2010, as part of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. One of the objectives of the BPCI Act was to amend the Public Health Service Act to create a licensure pathway for biological products that are shown to be biosimilar to or interchangeable with an FDA licensed biological reference product. More relevant to our discussion today, we're going to focus on two aspects of the BPCI Act. First, the BPCI Act clarified the statutory authority for the regulation of protein products by amending the definition of biological product to include a protein. Second, the BPCI Act deemed an approved new drug application for a biological product under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to be a license for the biological product under Section 351 of the Public Health Service Act. I will refer to this aspect of the BPCI Act as the transition provision. The transition provision did not take effect until March 23, 2020, 10 years after the BPCI Act was enacted in 2010. Let's now take a closer look at FDA's interpretation of the statutory term protein and the amended definition of biological product. As I mentioned before, the BPCI Act amended the definition of biological product in Section 351I of the Public Health Service Act to include a protein. The original text in the BPCI Act enacted in 2010 added the phrase shown here in blue, quote, protein, parenthetical, except any chemically synthesized polypeptide. In 2018, the agency published a proposed rule to amend 21 CFR 600.3H with its interpretation of the terms protein and chemically synthesized polypeptide. There is a link on this slide to the proposed rule, which provides more context on the FDA's thinking on these interpretations. A protein was interpreted to mean any alpha amino acid polymer with a specific defined sequence that is greater than 40 amino acids in size. And a chemically synthesized polypeptide was interpreted to mean any alpha amino acid polymer that is made entirely by chemical synthesis and is greater than 40 amino acids, but less than 100 amino acids in size. A few months before the transition provision was to take effect in 2020, Congress passed the Further Consolidated Appropriations Act in late 2019, which further amended the definition of biological product. 
dropping the parenthetical exclusion, any chemically synthesized polypeptide, as shown here on the slide in red strike through. In February 2020, the agency published the final rule codifying its interpretation of the term protein. The agency did not codify its interpretation of the term chemically synthesized polypeptide because Congress struck the parenthetical exception to protein from the definition of biological product. Having described the FDA's interpretation of the term protein, let's switch gears to discuss the transition provision of the BPCI Act. As a reminder, the transition provision of the BPCI Act, the text of which is shown here, essentially states that an approved NDA for a biological product shall be deemed to be a licensed BLA for the biological product on March 23, 2020. To increase transparency, prior to the transition date, FDA published a preliminary list of approved applications for biological products under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act that would transition to licensed BLAs in accordance with the transition provision. FDA posted this preliminary list on its website and periodically updated the list before the March 23, 2020 transition date. The list is available on FDA's website at the address shown on the slide. This is a depiction of the list of transition products, which is available on FDA's website. Some examples of approved applications for biological products under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act that transition to licensed BLAs on March 23, 2020 identified by their non-proprietary names include chorionic gonadotropin, hyaluronidase, menotropins, and pancrelipase. Consistent with the language in the BPCI Act, only approved applications for biological products under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act transitioned to licensed BLAs. Withdrawn applications for biological products under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act did not transition to a licensed BLA. For transparency, FDA published a list of these withdrawn applications on its website at the address shown here. This is a depiction of the list of withdrawn applications, which is available on FDA's website. All applications for a biological product under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act were removed from the Orange Book on the transition date. This means approved applications that transition to licensed BLAs and withdrawn applications for biological products were removed from the Orange Book on March 23, 2020. FDA archived a March 2020 pre-transition edition of the Orange Book, which is available on FDA's website, shown here. The bottom line for the transition provision for the purposes of our discussion today is that products that were transitioned or withdrawn are no longer a listed drug, meaning no ANDA can be submitted citing these products as a reference listed drug. One tangential aspect of the transition provision that we wanted to highlight today is that peptide drug products were not affected by the transition provision. Recall that the BPCI Act amended the definition of biological product to include a protein. Thus, peptides that do not otherwise meet the definition of a biological product continue to be regulated under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The agency considers polymers composed of 40 or fewer amino acids to be peptides. Because peptides continue to be reviewed and approved under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, an approved application for a peptide 
that appears in the Orange Book is a listed drug. FDA published in October 2017 a draft guidance entitled ANDAs for Certain Highly Purified Synthetic Peptide Drug Products that Refer to Listed Drugs of RDNA Origin. This draft guidance contains recommendations to assist potential applicants in determining when an application for a synthetic peptide that refers to a previously approved peptide of RDNA origin may be submitted as an ANDA. As described in the peptides guidance, given the current state of technology for peptide synthesis and characterization, FDA believes it is possible for an ANDA applicant to demonstrate that the active ingredient in a proposed generic synthetic peptide drug product is the same as the active ingredient in a previously approved peptide of RDNA origin. However, based on the type of data that can be submitted in an ANDA, FDA does not believe that an ANDA could include sufficient evidence for approval of a proposed peptide of RDNA origin at this time. Thus, as shown here, if a proposed peptide drug product references a previously approved peptide and is of RDNA origin, then it must be submitted for approval under Section 505b2 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. This brings us to our first challenge question. The transition provision of the BPCI Act, A, deemed approved applications for biological products under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to be licenses under the Public Health Service Act, B, became effective in 2010, C, applied to approved applications for peptides under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, or D, did not change an approved application for a biological product under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act's eligibility to be a listed drug. The correct answer here is A. The transition provision deemed approved applications for biological products under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act to be licenses under the Public Health Service Act. Challenge question number two. Which of the following statements is not true? A, a proposed synthetic peptide drug product that references a previously approved synthetic peptide drug product may be appropriate for submission as an ANDA. A proposed synthetic peptide drug product that references a previously approved peptide of RDNA origin may be appropriate for submission as an ANDA. C, a proposed peptide drug product of RDNA origin that references a previously approved synthetic peptide drug product may be appropriate for submission as an ANDA. Or D, a proposed synthetic peptide drug product of RDNA origin that references a previously approved peptide drug product is not appropriate for submission as an ANDA. The correct answer here is C. Currently, FDA does not believe that an ANDA could include sufficient evidence for approval of a proposed peptide of RDNA origin at this time, based on the type of data that can be submitted in an ANDA. In summary, the BPCI Act amended the definition of biological product to include a protein, which is defined as any alpha amino acid polymer with a specific defined sequence that is greater than 40 amino acids in size. Approved NDAs for biological products that transitioned to licensed BLAs on March 23, 2020 and withdrawn applications for biological products were removed from the Orange Book as of March 23, 2020 and are no longer listed drugs. Peptides, which are polymers composed of 40 or fewer amino acids, continue to be reviewed and approved under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. And finally, certain synthetic peptide drug products that reference previously approved peptide drug products can be submitted in an ANDA. 
This concludes my presentation today. I'll be back later with the panel for the question and answer session. Thank you.